So my name's Andrew Bogue, I'm from Catalyst IT, and I'm going to talk to you today about um, virtual classrooms as a student engagement tool with Big Blue Button. So starting off, just starting off in the interactive mode for about engagement here at the conference on day three. Well done for making it all for day three. So who here has used a virtual classroom as a student or as a educator? Great stuff. Uh, who here has used Big Blue Button? Very good. Um, Adobe Connect? Blackboard Collaborate? Okay. So a pretty broad um, set of experience out here, but there are some that have not yet used a um, virtual classroom tool. Uh, this talk is trying to be pretty general. I'm not going to go into a long list of feature analysis between the different tools I just mentioned, and there are others. Uh, I just want to sort of talk about some of the viewpoints that we've seen of virtual classrooms uh, from our recent experiences using Big Blue Button. So first, whenever you talk about Big Blue Button, it's important to say thank you very much to Brian Side Networks and Fred Dixon. If you've been to Moots around the world, you might have run into Fred Dixon, really, really passionate individual who has done a great job of building Big Blue Button as a free and open source solution with the aim of, if it's written up there, providing remote students a high quality online learning experience. Really passionate, passionate individual. I was fortunate enough to spend some time with him recent in, recently in Ottawa uh, with his team when I was there visiting some other clients we have in Canada. So I want to dispel a myth that virtual classrooms are about replacing real classrooms, okay? So we are all the product of real classrooms uh, based on the fact that we're, you know, uh, grown-ups. Uh, and that's the way it was done in our time. And it's interesting to conceptualise that, that it isn't about replacing traditional classroom environments. Um, there's a couple of things to consider. So first is just basic logistics, okay? So before, you know, in the early days of LMS, they were very much a logistical tool. Um, they were about f facilitating the ability to send in lots of exams or sorry, submissions to a lecturer without them having to carry them around, without them having to have a box, right? So they were submitted online. That was a logistical uh, administrative advantage, right, to the organisation. And the same can be said for virtual classrooms, and obviously it's easier to arrange uh, people being together when they don't all have to be physically in the same place. Now, that's a blatantly obvious statement, but it's true all the same. We ourselves use video technology, which is different to virtual classrooms, to arrange training webinars with some of our clients around tool sets, and that's just easier to organise than going on site and arranging for people to be together. It's also quite important that you tend to get a lower level of cancellation as well. You know, if you can't get everyone together, sometimes we instinctively cancel it because someone's going to miss out. But whereas even if one or two people turn up to one of these events, it's still worthwhile. You can record it. It's, it's just easier in many ways. The other thing is that there are some things that are genuinely superior in a virtual classroom environment. Um, the, the quietest, shyest student and the most boisterous are sort of on the same level. As we all remember from our uh, school days, it's quite possible to hide and, and spend one's time down the back or be incredibly disruptive, right? Now that, that's, some, that's in some ways mitigated with inside a virtual classroom, which is a difference. A virtual classroom is not just another video calling tool set, right? So, of course, there are many plugins with LMSs around, um, you know, some of the, the, the video conferencing tools everyone uses, whether that's Skype or Zoom or whatever. But virtual classrooms look quite similar in terms of the tool sets they use, but the way and the nitty gritty of the functional offering around the way things like access control is given and the, the differenti differentiation between a learner and, a, um, and an educator, and some of the ways you can carve people up into breakout rooms and use collaborative notes and all those things, that's a very different thing to the way a standard video call works. Um, and so from, from a distance they look the same, but in reality there are some quite key differences. So just shortly, big blue button, the features. I mean, I don't have a lot of time, and there are plenty of sources of information as to all the feature sets. In broad, you know, in, in context, it is a very feature-rich, feature -rich, competitive offering. 
Uh, so it's LMS integrated. Very important that it runs directly from your LMS. That's the idea. I'm about to do a demo shortly if, uh, <laughs> if everything works. So um, you know, it allows you to share your webcam and your audio, of course. Uh, you can upload presentations. It has a chat facility. There's the use of multi-user whiteboards, shared notes, breakout rooms, recorded sessions. Now, there's more to it than that, but there's a broad spectrum of the sorts of things you can use in a virtual classroom experience. So the big news in Big Blue Button over the last um, sort of three to six months, and it's been coming a while, is no more Flash. I don't know if anyone's aware that uh, Big Blue Button for quite some time used Flash in the browser. This was a necessity uh, based on what you needed to do in the past in order to get access to the webcam from a browser. So it was just the way it was, uh, but it caused quite a few problems and more and more as Flash is sort of on the way out and has been for some time. But um, the team at Blindside, along with many contributors, have now managed to re-implement the client in the browser client in HTML5 so they now have what they're calling the unified user interface, where you get this browser-based unified interface across all devices, which is pretty awesome, and all in HTML5. So it's sort of in the just work category, unless audio video doesn't work, and that's never happened to anyone in this room, has it? <laughs> so demo time. Okay. Okay. So I'm going into a, a Moodle site. The great thing is here is that we're using the Moodle Cloud. The Moodle Cloud has, oops, the Moodle Cloud has big blue button installed, ready to go for anyone who wants to use it. Sorry? Okay. Oh, okay, tech support, tech support. All right, so what do I need to do there? What do I need to do that? It was working before. Do I need to shine it across? Oh, here we go. Okay, this is gonna be interesting. Okay. Right, so we're going to, this is my hypothetical um, Russian language 101 course. I'm a bit of an amateur linguist, so I thought I'd make this a bit real. We've got some uh, learners coming along. This is using the Moodle Cloud. So where we go, we enter this course, and we, just, I'll just make that a bit bigger. And we go into our weekly tutorial. I might have to do one small operation here. So let's join the session. Now I'm going to mute this, because let's not try and make audio part of the equation, because that's sure to be a disaster. But you can, you can see what's happening here. This is all just using a browser. I will say yes. Comes on and connects to the deco test. It's expecting me to make some noise now. Click, 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 click. Um, and now it's going to say yes. Yep, there we go. I mean, assuming what happens in reality is that actually. Um, so I'm just going to upload a presentation quickly. And just quickly. And then off we go. Just uploading our presentation. Okay, so this is our screen here. Okay, so now we've got one, two, three, four participants down there, my loyal, great students. And so, here we, so as you can see, the, the interface on the left, we've got our students here. Let's make that slightly bigger. Um, we have chat on the right here. And there's also sort of quite granular control of uh, who's muted and who's able to, um, and actually I'll turn my webcam on, and who's able to do what. But I mean, I'm the instructor, so I'm sort of the boss in this particular environment. So here I am here. Hello, everyone. So first one is we got our Russian language 101. Let's talk about that. Great stuff. Nice iconic picture of Red Square. Moving on to our first part of the, of the course, which is let's... Uh, let's get everyone to practice writing some letters. And away we go. So, so, so Alex, this is the interactive multi-user whiteboard, so let's practice writing some Russian letters. Okay, well done everyone. That's, that's really, really, that's quite underwhelming. Um, I can see the standard of handwriting is, handwriting is seriously deteriorated since my time. Um, no one's quite able to write the literal ABC, but no, great work, great work. So I'll give everyone a high five there. Excellent work, excellent work, thanks, you all graduate, and now we'll remove the evidence so we never have to talk about it again. So, yep, so I turn that off. Great work, everyone, excellent, thanks for your time, so let's just wipe that off. No, thanks very much, so moving right along, we've, we've, we've done our writing practice now, and that was incredibly collaborative, and you can see everyone's really happy to be involved. So the next, now we're moving on to our next part, and we'll, we'll just throw out another, gr another great tool in virtual classrooms is uh, quizzes, so they call them polls here in, um, Big blue button. So where we've got our question here, and I'll start a poll. 
So it's popped up with a question on everyone's screen. You can't see it because I'm the presenter. And we choose the ABCD. So up it's gone there. And we can see here are the four participants over the left, and they've all answered. Away we go. And until I, um, so they've all provided an answer except for one. And now once I put publish poll results, so now you can see the results on there. And we've got, it's a good, fair bit, one of each. Someone's bound to be right. Uh, so you have, um, so the, that actually says, uh, what, is it, what is it, how do you say dog in English? So the answer was uh, D, so well done, whoever got D, which was Paul. Excellent work. So we just, we just collapsed that away, and away we go. So that's an incredibly successful uh, virtual classroom you've just witnessed, and everyone's graduated my Russian language 101 course. So there's a 100% success rate, uh, and you know, so we'll be going to market sooner or later in the year. But so the, the, thing about, the thing about virtual class, the thing about Big Blue Button, which is really impressive at this point, is sort of the just work factor. I mean, that, we, we threw that together this afternoon. Uh, no, we're not, techno we're not educators, and there was no special... Um, no special magic done with any of the browsers having to be updated or any of that sort of stuff. And that's really the measure of success uh, in a virtual classroom solution or an audio video solution um, these days because everything sort of has to work. So I'm just going to try to magically change back to the slides. Okay. Oops, no. Boom, 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 boom. So, yep, demo time. So I just want to let everyone know that Catalyst provide, uh, Big Blue Button has a really, really enticing free tier model for everyone to use it because the best way, the best way to assess a virtual um, classroom solution is not necessarily to go to market with a 67 page document with all your requirements, it's to actually use it, right? So that's what we suggest is you, you try it out and make use of it uh, and see if it's something that you can apply. And there is a commercial model with some extra offerings around things like perpetual recordings of uh, sessions and some other stuff, but it's ready to go for your use as is. And you know you can use it on Moodle Cloud, anyone can log in and create a, an account on Moodle Cloud, or you can install it in your own Moodle. And Catalyst is providing an associa association with the Moodle, come up and talk to myself or someone else at the Catalyst booth, uh, three months support and, and support and installing the big blue button plug into your Moodle instance. So we'd be happy to talk about that. That's, a, that's an offer here at the at the moot and also we can help about all sorts of other things in the world of Moodle or anything that you feel the discussion to talk about with open source technology uh, thank you very much for your time and uh, questions I don't know if we've got any questions can you pre-schedule sessions in that for people to book into and then have their attendance marked you can. There's still some. Um, you can. There's still some work being done around. I'll have to get back to you on some of the metrics around completion as a potentially as an assignment. But you can pre-schedule sessions, and you can get metrics out of it. Um, uh, there is there's some actually reporting dashboards you can get as well. So there's there's yes broadly. Um, so that that's sort of a, a good demo of, of it in sort of like a lab or that uh, tutorial type situation. But if we wanted to do, so we currently run live streams for a lot of our lectures that are oversubscribed. Um, so we have like a production type setup where we have an RTMP stream, endpoint that we hit at Microsoft Stream. Um, but could this handle that kind of thing? Could it handle hundreds of people? So it would be more like the, all the webcams down the bottom, not there and like handle like an, an import from like Wirecast or something like that. Potentially, but I mean, that sounds a little bit more like lecture capture and broadcast to some degree. It, it is, but there are other people also want uh, sort of ways for the uh, online audience to interact in a way that they could if they were in, um, if they're in the room. So, so you, I, I think I, there's, a, there's those two things are slowly merging together. They are. Um, I mean, there are logistical challenges to having too many people. I spoke about this with um, Fred with, in a collaborative session, right? I mean, things like video cameras and the ability to sort of filter out noise. Um, the numbers that I heard Fred speaking about for the limits of a session was something around 50, I believe. But that's what they've tested it to. But it's not to say that those discussions can't be launched. Uh, and, you know, to, and once again, these things can be uh, tested. And, and they're very, very happy to talk to anyone about what their needs are and, and how they can work with them. So, you know, you can certainly, you, you can support sessions where you only, you're only a viewer. So, conceptually, that works fine.
I was just interested to know how recordings managed and where do they ho where they hosted with Big Blue Button. So they are hosted. It depends, right? I mean, if you're talking about sort of sovereignty and physical location, that depends. Depends on which server you connect to. There is a server here in Australia, uh, but there are also ones in. I think the one we we're actually using there was in Canada. So it shows how sort of mature the offering is. Uh, there's some control about that, but it's it's hosted in Big Blue Button's environment at the moment, um, but it's visible via Moodle. Uh, there are some restrictions on how many recordings you can see in the free plan, but it's it's visible via Moodle, played by played via their infrastructure. But you can download it and take it if you wish. And look, there are great small and I mean there are small flexible companies. So if you engage with them and say this is what we need and these are the constraints we have, um, which is generally around things like data sovereignty and physical location, then they, they're happy to have those discussions. And as I say, they do have a presence here in Australia. They've got physical infrastructure here in Australia. So that's a big step to where, towards where many organisations need to be. Thank you very much, everyone.